Hi, it's Rich Folly. I'm on the set of Book View now, and this is BookCon 2015. I'm with our guest host, Gail Foreman. Thank you for being here, Gail. Thanks. And we also have Jason Reynolds. Jason, you are the author of The Boy in the Black Suit and When I Was the Greatest. Yep. It's so cool to have you here. We only have it for a few, few minutes because there's a panel of people waiting for you down I don't know if they're waiting for me. <laughs> they are waiting for you. But what's cool is when I talked to Gail and I asked, like, who should we get? Gail immediately brought up your name as someone we wanted to have here, and I'm so glad that we were able to put this together. Thank you. Thank you. Jason's a fellow Brooklyn guy. Yep. And Brooklyn really figures pretty prominently in, in both your books now, yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Jason, last time we met, I can't stop thinking about the writing advice that your uncle. Was it your uncle gave you? <laughs> yes. My I, uncle. I feel like this what is the it? best writing advice ever. <laughs> My uncle... So I had, you know, I come from a family of colorful people, like in the literal sense and in the <laughs> metaphoric sense, right? And, and my uncle, my uncle was this crazy sort of alcoholic, super paranoid, but like awesome dude. And he said one day we were talking about books, and uh, he was, you know, we were talking about things, and he was trying to read through mine, and we were having all these discussions. And he said, Jason, nobody wants. And, and every time I, I, every time I would talk to him, every time I would talk to him and try to tell him some long drawn out story, he would cut me off, and say, Jason, like you gotta. You got to get to it. You know, you got to get to it. I don't want to hear all of this. I don't want to hear <laughs> all the buildup. I don't want to hear. Just get to the meat. And then he said, it's the equivalent of if you were writing a novel. If you want to win audiences over, yeah. then start the novel with and shots rang out. <laughs> He's like, and that's how you win. He's like, but you always have to sort of like skip all of the the rigmarole and, and get to the meat, get to the action. So did you did you like? incorporate that immediately into your writing and what you're doing because uh, I mean as a young kid I could never ever get right to the action I would like these flowery I, 40, I think, you things. know I think because that's the way I was sort of raised and, and being around him for so long you can't help but hear his voice you know so every time I'm like working on something and I'm dragging it out or every time I'm trying to set up the set up the scene he's I could just hear him you know he's gone now you know but I can just hear him like Jason get get to it man like I could see that advice playing out in your in your latest book, sure. Boy in Black Suit, because he, you get pretty straight to the action. We jump in straight away. Mom's gone. Mom's gone. Funeral. Yep. Gets this job. Yep. Boom. By the first you chapter, talk everything about is this done. Book? Is this hilarious book about funerals that you've written? Yeah, you know, it's funny because you're the first person in... Thankfully, you're the first person. Finally, somebody can say that it, it is a funny book, right? It's a it's a book about about death and about funerals, but more so, it's a book about life, right? And 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 Books I think about death usually are. are about life, yeah. right? And I think what happens sometimes is that when you when you even try to write about something heavy like death, people become afraid because they see death as such a sad thing, and it is a sad thing. But funerals are when you step away from them, yeah. are sometimes really funny. Oh, I mean, and, abs be. and absurd and ridiculous. And, uh, but the and word isn't funny, but the actual event itself. The, the event really itself. Funny, yeah. The event itself. Well, they can also be really joyful. And they can be really joyful. I yeah. mean, and you, and you think about the death tradition in so many different cultures all over the world. They vary, right? So whether it be, you know, if you, if you go to New Orleans, they're partying in the street. It's a parade. You know, and if you were to come to some of my family's funerals, right? I mean, all we do is basically cry for 10 minutes and then get, and then not cry. <laughs> 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 and then eat some food. And then eat some food yeah. and, and crack jokes and, yeah. and you know, it's, it's fun. I do think that, that you feel sometimes uncomfortable at a funeral because you're, you're oftentimes, re, there's a reunion element of funerals and you're happy to see them, but then you realize, wait a minute, I'm, I, maybe I'm not supposed to, to do or that. Yeah, and yeah. I think if you can just sort of let that go just and just go. realize, well, why did we wait for this? Yeah, to exactly. for that? And I think that when you're writing for, for children or young adults and you are, talking about serious stuff like death or funerals all of a sudden everybody starts to get really nervous right. but this is this is sort of the oh, evergreen stuff that we're all interested in as sure humans. sure and I, and I think that's necessary it's like the it's, it's a it's a common theme across the entire human experience we all have to kind of go through death mm -hmm. and so I think that this is a way for us to look at it for what it is and to also see it for the from the other side of it as as sort of like a joyous event sometimes, or as a funny thing sometimes, or as just sort of more more nuanced than just pain. Yeah. With the audience you write for, a lot of them, um, there's certainly plenty that do fully understand death, but for a lot of them, it's the furthest idea and concept from their mind. Sure. So did you find it challenging at all when you're writing about this, to think about the audience and the age groups of the people that are going to be reading it? No, you know, I didn't. And, and the reason why is because I was a young person who experienced a lot of death very early. And so... I tend to live by the rule that if I experienced it, I wasn't the only one, right. Right? and I haven't been the only one. And so, yeah. 
you know, and so I, that that gave me a bit of you know a bit of more, a, a bit more confidence when writing it because I know for a fact that there are young people who lose their parents, especially in today's time, who lose their parents to cancer mm -hmm. early, right? Breast cancer and all these cancers are sort of running rampant, and young people are are, are dealing with these things. It, it is sort of prevalent. It doesn't seem as prevalent as it does when we get older because we lose friends and family members in, in a different way. But I think. A lot of young people are dealing with it. I think it's interesting because statistically, if you look at like, sorry to bring this up, but like morbidity of death by, like your death rates by accidents really shoot up among like teenagers, teenagers. because there's the impulse control, because they're in cars for the first time. There you go. So this is an age group I remember as a teen where all of a sudden I was going to funerals. I was seeing peers go. So I think that it's exactly the kind of age where you want to be grappling with that kind of stuff through your reading. Absolutely. I mean, 17 years old, I had lost tons of friends. Right. From things like car accidents, alcohol poisoning, right? Experimenting and going too far, yeah. right? Those kinds of things are happening. Yeah. yeah. Well, I could keep you here forever, but I know there'll be sorry, somebody guys. flagging me down. No, don't be sorry. It was really cool to have you, Jason. And uh, uh, I, I hope you have an awesome time on your panel. And thank, thank you. you for joining Gail and I here. Uh, this is Jason Reynolds. He's off to his panel now. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll come back in just a little bit.